My name is Dr. Ellen Moffitt. I'm an assistant medical examiner for the city and county of San Francisco, and I perform autopsies, review medical records, and write reports, and also integrate other sorts of tests and data in order to determine cause and manner of death. I've been here at this facility since we moved here in November, and previous to that at the old facility. I was worried when we moved here that because this building is so much larger that I wouldn't see people every day. I would miss my personal interactions with the other employees. But that hasn't been the case. This building is very nice, spacious. We have lovely autopsy tables. And I do get to go upstairs and downstairs several times a day to see everyone else that I work with. We do have a bond, I think, as any other group of employees that work for a specific agency in San Francisco. We do work very closely on each case in order to determine the best cause of death. And we also interact with family members of the deceased. So in a way, that brings us closer together also. My name is Trish Bubnis. I'm an investigator, too, here at the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner in San Francisco. As an investigator here, I basically investigate all manners of death that come through our jurisdiction. I go out in the field, I interview police officers, detectives, family members, physicians, anyone who might potentially be involved with the death. Additionally, I take any property with the deceased individual and take care and custody of that. I'm maintaining chain and custody for court purposes if that becomes an issue later. And then I notify next of kin and make any additional follow-up phone calls as necessary with that particular death. I'm dealing with people at the worst possible time in their particular lives. I'm delivering the worst news that they could possibly get. Really working closely with the family and helping them uh, through their grieving process is really where I get the gratification. My name is Ricky Moore. I am a clerk at the San Francisco Medical Examiner's Office. I assist the pathology as well as the toxicology and the investigative team. I also work very close with the families, the loved ones, and the funeral establishments. I started at the old facility. The building was old. <laughs> it was vintage, I shouldn't say old. We had a lot of issues, you know, as far as plumbing and things like that. And I had a tiny desk. So I feel very happy to be here in the new digs where I actually have room to do my work. <laughs> my name is Sue Perring. I'm the forensic toxicologist supervisor here at the San Francisco Office of the Chief Medical Examiner. We test for alcohol, drugs, and poisons in biological substances like blood or urine. In this capacity, I oversee all the lab's operations. The Forensic Laboratory Division here, we perform all the toxicology testing for both human performance and postmortem cases in the city of San Francisco. Out at scene, we would collect evidence. There is a woman who was killed after a robbery homicide. And the DNA that was collected from the zip ties that she was bound with ended up being a cold hit to the suspect. And that was the only investigative link that connected the scene to the suspect. It's nice to get that feedback. Oftentimes we do a lot of work. You don't hear about the resolve of it, but once in a while to hear that what you did actually had an impact on somebody. I mean, we couldn't spare her life, but at least bring justice to what happened. With the new building and the support that uh, the community has shown for the work that we do, we're really able to take what we do to the next level. Many of our counterparts at other state, city, or other countries even don't have the resources and don't have the beautiful building and the equipment necessary to really uh, advance what we're doing. Sometimes we go to court, whoever's on call may be called out of the office to go to various portions of the city to investigate homicide deaths, particularly sometimes suspicious deaths, and we do whatever we can to get our job done. Certainly when we think that a case has a particular natural cause of death and then it turns out to be another natural cause of death, unexpected findings are always fun. I have a um, prior background in law enforcement. I was a police officer for a little over eight years. During that time, I handled homicides and suicides and all other types of deaths, including other law enforcement duties. So I'd already been around death investigation type scenes. However, as a police officer, we 
really only handled minimal components of it, and then it either was turned over to the coroner or our detective division. I actually have always been extremely intrigued with those types of calls because I always kind of wondered why if someone actually died. I have an extremely supportive family, older children who tend to say, mom, how was your day? And I can give them minor details as to how my day was. And I have an amazing spouse who is always willing to listen to any and all details of my day. And without that, it would be really hard to, to deal with the, the negative components of this job. Well, being that I am a native of San Francisco and I grew up in this community, I do come across that a lot where I may know a loved one coming either through the back way or a loved one uh, seeking answers for their deceased. There are a lot of cases where I, I may feel affected by it, you know, if it, there's a child involved or things like that, but I really try to, to not bring it home and not let it really affect me. You know, whenever I tell people that I work at the medical examiner's office, they always give me a side eye, like, what do you do? Do you do the autopsies? And I tell them I'm more of the administrative and I deal mainly with the families. Because family members are often upset about their loved ones being deceased, that can be very stressful. But most of the time, work here is very enjoyable. Soon after I started working with dead people, um, I had just gotten married. And one night I woke up kind of in a cold sweat. And I really thought there was somebody dead in my bed. And then I rolled over and I kind of poked the body. And sure enough, it was my husband who grumbled and rolled over and went back to sleep. But I realized, OK, this, this job does kind of have its lingering effects. But in terms of you know, any, why did you want to go into this? I loved science when I was growing up, but knew I didn't want to be a doctor um, and didn't want to be a pharmacist. And the more I learned about forensics, the more interested I was of how perfect of a combination it was between applied science and the criminal justice system. But I think anybody who's interested in science, in criminal justice, in finding out the facts of a case, and really were truth seekers, so trying to find out what really happened, um, anybody who's interested in that has a place in this field. Being a woman, I think that we all just need to just go for it and don't let anyone sell you, you can't. So with regard to this position in comparison to crime dramas out there, I would say that there might be some minor correlations. However, let's face it, we aren't Hollywood, we're real world. We handle things differently. Yes, we go in and collect evidence. We want to preserve that evidence accordingly, but we're not scanning fingerprints out in the field like you might see on a, a Hollywood television show. There are several times that I have family say thank you, thank you for your kindness, thank you for what you do, and for me that's extremely fulfilling and I feel like, you know, somebody has to do my job, so if I can make a situation that's really negative for someone more positive, then I feel like I'm doing the right thing for the city of San Francisco.